welcome to the panel of Business in Brazil, where I, along with my fellow panelists, are going to give you information uh, as international business owners uh, you, you can use to consider doing business in Brazil. My name is Sharnice Dotson. I'll be the moderator for this panel. I've been moderating this panel for five years, and I also serve as an international marketing analyst. With me today is Debbie Tyson, who's a Brazilian consulate living in the United States, Andrew Hall, an entrepreneur, Joey Cassio, a real estate agent in Brazil, and Josh Womack, a security consultant. Now that we know who our panelists are, I'd like to lay down a few rules. Uh, the audience, can you please hold your questions to the Q&A portion following this panel? And also, panelists, please keep your answers to every question within 90 seconds. Um, but before our panelists begin uh, discussing about Brazil, I'd like to give uh, a stand for, uh, an opinion on doing business in Brazil from my own standpoint. Um, once again, my name is Sharnicia, and uh, according to U.S. Media Consulting, $22.2 billion will be spent in Brazil this year on advertising. This, in, this will make Brazil the fifth largest uh, ad spender in the world. Uh, what this increase in funding means is that both that there's an increase in competition in Brazil and that there are more people buying things in Brazil. Um, Brazil, much like the United States, also has uh, advertising in all sorts of mediums. So you can see TV ads, print ads, and things like that, which means the market is enormous. And uh, according to Project News, advertising, um, more consumers are moving into the middle class, which means that more people are able to afford more things in Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, uh, sorry. In Brazil, one of the biggest industries in Brazil right now is the beauty industry. So models are used a lot in a lot of the advertising. And a thing that's different about Brazil's advertising is that they're vibrant and entertaining. The, the crazier the advertising, the more effective it is. So this will give you as business owners the opportunity to really kind of rebrand your company in a new and fresh way. So uh, this is why I think Brazil is a great idea in terms of expanding and doing business there. So now let's move to our panelists. Um, I'd like each of you to uh, talk about your recommendations for doing business in Brazil, starting with you, Debbie. Hi, my name is Debbie Tyson, and I do highly recommend doing um, business with any Brazilian um, company or just starting up your own company, branching off into Brazil. I believe that most Brazilians are very hospitable. We're very known for that. We're also very risk oriented and creative, and that's why I believe any person would not regret doing business in Brazil. Hello, my name is Andrew Hall, and I am neutral with doing business in Brazil. Due to my research, there are good and bad things about doing business in the country. Although the economy is on a rise, the crime rate is also at a steady, constant rate, and that is why I'm neutral. Hello, my name is Joseph Cassia, and I am for doing business in Brazil because of a few reasons. One, Brazil is the second most uh, visited Latin American country, so tourism is a huge factor, and businesses can flourish because of that tourism factor. According to the information company, small businesses in Brazil are becoming uh, much more popular because of the low taxes that are, um, that are pre 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 that are happening in Brazil, and uh, small cities, or big cities like Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro are key elements to having a good startup business in Brazil. My name is Josh Romack, and I would not recommend doing business with Brazil. While it is one of the world's fastest growing economies, there are a lot of obstacles to overcome when attempting to do business in Brazil. Most of this is due to a gargantuan overly bureaucratic government riddled with corruption and crime. Uh, according to BBC News, on average it takes 13 procedures and 119 days of work to start a business, and 17 procedures and six, 469 days to obtain construction permits. If your company has an ethical problem with you know, sliding a little cash to a corrupt politician, then I would definitely not recommend doing business in Brazil. Now that we know our panelists' recommendations, we're going to start to really go into uh, doing business in Brazil. So, Debbie, the first question is, what is some of the social etiquette in Brazil? Well, first I'd like to start off by saying that Portuguese is the official language spoken in Brazil. Um, also, I'd like to say that if we're, whatever part of Brazil you're in, appearances really do count. So, if you're trying to make an impression on a business person, um, just know that you need to be looking um, manicured and um, the best 
that you can be. It's not unusual for you to engage in conversation with a Brazilian and for there to be a lot of interruption because Brazilians tend to be very passionate conversationalists and um, enthusiastic with that as well. Um, some of the body language I'd like to talk about is that physical contact is very much a part of conversation also. We're really used to standing close to one another while we're speaking as well as touching one another and um, that both men and women greet women with a kiss on each cheek but men usually do shake hands upon greeting each other. And one thing that you must avoid at all times, wherever you are in Brazil, is the um, OK hand sign in the US, which a lot of people use, because it's, um, it's seen as very vulgar and offensive in Brazil. So just stick the thumbs up. Thank you. Um, Josh, how would you rate the transportation infrastructure in Brazil? Well, according to the World Economic Forum, Forum Brazil's infrastructure ranks 114th out of 148. Uh, the roads are in horrible condition, and according to BBC News, over 40,000 people die each year in traffic-related accidents. Um, I think it would be a logistical nightmare to attempt to do business in Brazil before they start uh, investing more money in their infrastructure. Currently, they only invest about 1.6% of their GDP, as opposed to the global average of 3.8%. Thank you, Jerry. So how do the worldly events in the near future affect uh, doing business in Brazil? Well, with the World Cup and the Summer Olympics coming up in Brazil, business opportunities are limitless. If a company is going into Brazil now, um, as a startup company, they're going to succeed because of the rise in tourism in Brazil. Also, if it's a lasting company, these few crucial years at the beginning will start off that company to make it a staple in Brazil. Um, according to the Brazil Land of the Future website, Brazil will grow rapidly and earn tons of money based off these games. And businesses in preparation for the games will lower unemployment as well as help gain confidence in the Brazilian um, business world. So, so overall the key element is tourism and having that as the main aspect of business. Thank you. Andrew, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the economy in Brazil right now? Well, the economy has been on a steady rise since 2004, and according to BBC News, it is the seventh largest GDP in the world. Brazil has the highest ranked economy in South America, and the large agriculture, agriculture, mining, manufacturing, and service sectors is what mostly makes up the economy. But as with the good things, there are also bad things. The crime has been at a steady rate since 2004 as well. And also, companies have seen uh, business crisis as well. Thank you. This is a follow-up question and also your last question, Andrew. How does the economy in terms of GDP affect trade within Brazil? Well, the GDP was worth $2.25 trillion in 2002. And their imports are machinery, transportation equipment, and oil. And their exports are also footwear, coffee, and iron ore. This is a large number of uh, imports and exports, which means the GDP is also in a, is also in numerous accounts as well, and Brazil's real. But the problem is Brazil's real is one of the most overvalued currencies in the world, which makes business a little iffy in the country. This is why I'm neutral with doing business in Brazil. Thank you, uh, Joey. This will also be your last question. Could you tell us more about some of the major cities in Brazil? Of course, the major cities in Brazil are such as uh, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Porto Alegre, and Brasilia. Each one of these uh, three, four country uh, cities in Brazil uh, have different special aspects that help the country's businesses. One is um, all of them are very unique and have essential roles in making Brazil what it is today. From the tropical beaches to the busy industry all the way to the rainforest, rainforest. All of these aspects help businesses uh, attract people to Brazil and help the tourism uh, aspect grow even more. So according to the Embassy of Brazil website, more businesses are wanting to have Brazil as a place of business because of this and it's essential to take advantage of the people that are coming to Brazil now 
and with the games because it is so such a money making opportunity that the opportunities for business are limitless. So overall what I have told you today is why it's important for us for a business to jump into Brazil now because of the tourism aspect, also because of the games coming up, um, as well as some of the major cities and the key elements of those cities that attract people to come to those cities. So lastly, I just want to say, why wouldn't you want to go to Brazil and experience an awesome country where you can live in paradise while making some money? Thank you. Uh, Josh, this will also be your last question. Could you share with our audience some of your security recommendations for doing business in Brazil? Sure, sure. Let me see that. Um, paradise is one thing, but uh, according to UN ODC statistic, Brazil has one of the highest murder rates per capita in the world, and foreigners are often kidnapped and robbed. Um, corrupt police, the corrupt police force prevents us from getting accurate crime statistics on how, just how common that is, but don't expect any help from them either. According to Russia Today, Brazilian police's heavy-handed tactics cause violent clashes between police and citizens on a regular basis, with, with one of them erupting into a, a full-scale riot as recently as April 22nd of this year. Uh, I would not do business in Brazil without a paramilitary security firm who knows the ins and outs of doing business in Brazil. Oh, thank you. And Debbie, this will be the last question for the panel and also for you. What is some of the corporate culture in Brazil? Um, well, some piece of advice for doing business with Brazil is that it will be very hard um, to get anywhere with fax, phone calls, or emails. Um, with anyone you're trying to do business with in Brazil, so it's better to stick face to face with um, the communication aspect of business. Also, time in Brazil is approached at a very relaxed manner, so if you set up any appointments, um, it's not unusual for them not to um, show up on time, and just because they live life at a slower pace and don't prioritize that as much. Also, don't plan to make any appointments during holidays or festivals, especially the big ones like Carnival, because most Brazilians tend to take that time off of work and spend time with their family, which they prioritize also. Um, since family is very evident in Brazil, you see a lot of their family members will be involved in the actual uh, corporation or organization, and um, it might be family owned or not, but it's very common for that. And also, if you know more people in Brazil, that's going to get you a lot further because a lot of the times it's more about uh, who you know and less about what you know. And that is exactly why I am for doing business in Brazil. Thank you, Carlos. This concludes our panel. Um, panelist Debbie Tyson talked about how Brazil's fantastic culture makes interacting with Brazilians for business welcoming, so businesses should do business in Brazil. Andrew Hall touched upon the Brazilians. Uh, Brazil's strengthening economy and how that will have and provide some economic concerns for doing business in Brazil. So he had, gave a very neutral stance. Joey Cassia talked about how Brazil is a beautiful country, therefore, as he stated, the paradise to do business in. So he recommends doing business in Brazil. While Josh Womack cited that the poor infrastructure and high crime rates make Brazil not a desirable location to do business in. And I, uh, Chinesia, talked about how Brazil's great market for businesses Tap into a fun a fun advertising market to where you can rebrand your business and be a great asset to doing business in Brazil. Uh, thank you again, thank you panelists, and thank you audience for listening to us. And now we open up for our Q and A.